All right, welcome once again. We're going to be talking about Origins today. Yes, we have talked about them before, but it's time to actually go a little bit more in-depth in what they actually do. How many are there, and uh, where will they be part of? Because not all Origins will be part of Federations. No, there's going to be uh, a whole bunch of them that uh, are actually locked behind different expansions because, well, it's going to look like that a lot of the Origins, well, the Origins themselves, the system, is going to be part of the free update, but then Federations and all the other expansions will have their own specific version behind it. So, uh, you know, at least their own Origins, which is interesting. Um, there is one in particular that I'm not entirely c cool with. Um, I will go into detail about that shortly once we get to that one. We'll leave that one for last. So be sure to stick through the entire video. I'm also aware that uh, the, the amount of uh, playthrough content has been a little bit lacking as well. I will talk about that at the end of the video too. So make sure you stick around. Anyway, Origins. Origins, they are a background story for your Empire. You can only have one, which is fairly straightforward. It's very similar to the, uh, the no, not the traits here. What am I thinking of? The um, civics. So, for instance, this empire here, the Rock, which is, of course, uh, Wayne, I'm handled by uh, Wayne the Rock Johnson. You have all these cool civics that you can be running. I can, for instance, disable them. Uh, these guys are, for instance, who can run with like mechanists and. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, life seeded is a potential uh, a decent one that can become a origin, but we're gonna go deep into that uh, right now. So origins, uh, it's a it's only one origin it will be a separate option in this menu, and a lot of the civics will move into that system. Basically, it's an additional civic that you can pick that guides your empire uh, basically through the entire game, and it really gives an additional flavor to your empire. I'm not entirely. 100% cool with the fact they just basically grabbed the Civic and just moved it over and then wrote it up as, oh, we have a new origin. Um, it feels a little bit disingenuous, but let's dive in, shall we? First of all, the system is completely free, comes with the patch, and uh, the first one that you will be able to get is Prosperous Unification. Prosperous Unification is the default uh, uh, well, origin that you can pick. Basically, what you get is you get four additional pops and two additional districts at the start of the game. Uh, which those districts are is a bit of a question. Whether or not those are food, minerals, energy, or uh, habitation is a whole different question. There is not a lot of clarity on that. But yeah, four additional pops and it's available to everybody, which is nice. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, in total there's 18 origins in the game, of which some of them were converted to being civics. Again, not entirely cool with this, calling it 18 or new origins. Because a lot of them are just copy paste. Anyway, mechanists. Oh wow, mechanists. We have those here as well. It's now instead of going to be a civic, it is going to be a origin. You start with eight pops and uh, the ability to build more. So there you go. Uh, also robot upkeep. I don't know whether or not that is part of it. There's not a lot of detail about this, but mechanist is becoming a origin. Good time. Syncretic evolution. Yes, that is also going to become a joyous origin 12 pops of another species uh you need to own utopia to, to actually be able to get this origin same for mechanis by the way uh it works exactly the same way except it's an origin life seated you start off on a gaia world it is currently a civic oh that is the wrong one life seated it's currently a civic uh, you start on the size 25 gaia world you get several rare planetary features so crystals modes gases uh, swamps and stuff like that and uh yeah that's pretty much it when it comes to that post apocalyptic is also going to become a origin uh where you start in the tomb world the usual stuff survivor traits tomb world habitability etc uh, again becomes an origin so far we have not seen a lot of originality and uh, that one will be part of apocalypse together with life seated then we get to, to the very first original one which is remnants so remnants is rather interesting it starts you off on a relic world now for those of you who don't know what relic worlds are they are basically large planets well they can be a large planets not necessarily always but they're completely run down you can invest resources to eventually turn it into a city world why would you because then you would forgo all the cool tech bonuses that you can get off that world would you really want to go for an Monopolis? Mm, arguable arguable i don't think 
you want to go for it. So yeah, you start off in the relic world instead of a normal world. No real talk whether or not you're going to have a specific type of, uh, you know, uh, yeah, and any particular type of planet class attached to that when you only get relic world class or anything like that. Uh, that's not particularly clear. So yeah. Uh, that's going to be part of Federation. Shattered Ring uh, starts off in a sh Shattered Ring world. Uh, there used to be an exploit that allowed you to do that, and more than enough mods that allow you to do that as well. Where your empire lives on the only intact section of the ancient megastructure, and you can uh, rebuild most of the ring structures, except one, because it will be destroyed. You can get minerals from it. And then there's, of course, the question, hey, how am I going to get... Uh, minerals? Well, obviously, that's your answer, but rare resources will also spawn on this using a arcane generator at least that was why i've been told the arcane generator uh, then gives you resources it's very similar to life seated it's easy mode come on shattered ring easy mode it's so many open jobs available it's actually insanity part of federations so there you go that's uh, we got two void dwellers start on the habitat above uh, uh, above your destroyed former homeworld uh, adapt at living in habitats and start with technology to build new ones. That's actually really cool. Habitat technology is pretty high up on the tech tree. I really hope that you get a reduction in habitat cost because 3,000 or 5,000 alloys is not exactly a minor amount, especially if you have very limited habitation in said habitats. Uh, Void developers, we need to get a serious bonus to... Yeah, living in habitats to make it worthwhile. I think if, I actually think void dwellers, if they use, you know, uh, habitats in their current shape, it's probably going to be the most difficult start in the game. Uh, which I hope it's you know they're going to be achievements for that. Scion start off as a fall vassal of a fallen empire. So you start out, you're a fallen empire. It doesn't say which type of fallen empire. Uh, it's a federation start, just like Void Dwellers is just now. And uh, yeah, you're a vassal of a fallen empire. So you're fairly protected, I would hope. But yeah, there there is that. Then there is Galactic Doorstep. Uh, when I first, first heard of Galactic Doorstep, I kind of thought that you would start in its own little cluster. Kind of like the L cluster, but no, it's, it's just an origin that spawns you in a sis, uh, into a system that has a dormant gateway in it nothing really else i guess it gives you very early access but if you don't get special events added to that particular gateway then it's going to be pretty useless i do hope there is event chains attached to these origins because otherwise it, it really wouldn't make sense then there's tree of life we'll talk about that shortly because there is some finagling there and i think it's important to mention uh, on the shoulders of giants start with an archaeological archaeological site related to a mysterious benefactor so you start with an archaeological site i, I think this is going to be probably one of the funnest ones because it means there's going to be a chain of archaeological events attached to this particular starter i think that's going to be a lot of fun and uh in, in combination with uh, ancient relics and all that stuff should be really cool uh this one is part of federations by the way just so you're aware a uh, calamitous birth lithoid only and this you can only play this if you have lithoids the expansion pack start with a massive crater on your home world and you'll be able to build meteorite colony ships which colonize planets in a more dramatic fashion i.e slam rock into world yeah that's the, how colonization works for uh these bad boys actually a really cool concept i, I like it it's 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 fun it's it's good uh, resource consolidation machines only and of course you'll need to have synthetic dawn for that um start with a machine world as your own home world my god that is powerful machine worlds are insanely good because you can build infinite well you can build as many districts of the type that you want as long as you have districts available rather than having a limited amount of districts uh, of a certain type available let's say you can only have farming because there's only so much arable land uh, machine worlds they can basically go everywhere and that is insanely powerful like i mentioned only with synthetic dawn C common ground start as a leader of a galactic union federation uh, with the federation tradition on locked uh yeah you basically start off as a single system empire with two border systems that are also single system empires an example here it shows alpha centauri bernard star and earth um i'm so unsure about this one 
Because you could easily turn into a Hegenemy. And even if you have a good spawn or a bad spawn, it means that some of your battles are just going to be locked in. But I guess it does help when uh, some of the other empires start coming in. You can very quickly add them to your federation. So that's useful. Uh, part of federations, just so you are aware. Hegemon, start as the leader of a Hegenemy Federation. With the Federation tradition being on Locked. Also, Federation is exactly the same, except you are the Hegemon. Uh, I really hope that we can get a similar start here as a, basically a better start than the Feudal Society Civic. Again, Feudal, so Feudal Society Civic and Hegemon. Uh, you know, it would be nice if Hegemon just completely outright replaced uh, the uh, Feudal Society one because it'd be, it'd be so good. It'd be so good. And then there is... An interesting one, it's called Doomsday. Now, your home world is doomed and will explode after 64 years, so you need to find a new home for your species. I like how this one is actually labeled as a warning, a challenging origin. Uh, your home world will explode in 64 years. Uh, I've done a video about this before. There's a mod, it's called Cosmic Fury uh, Supernovae. Uh, you should really try it out. It's uh, it's in the map. It's in the mod list below the uh, below the video. Go check it out because it is quite good. I did it in ten. Like challenging origin, sixty four years to get off your home world and move everything. It's easy, easy peasy. Come on, guys, you can squeeze this down. Uh, sixty four years. Come on, that is so easy. Even though there is no guaranteed habitable worlds that will spawn near your home system, even then, 64 years. If I can colonize two worlds within 10 years, my god. That is... That is just crazy. That is just crazy. That is... In my opinion, it's sure, for some people it's going to be challenging, but... Not for me. And then finally, there is the Lost Colony, another empire of the same species as you will exist somewhere in the galaxy, but it will also be available to everybody, which is very similar to the UNE Commonwealth quasi-storyline that exists, where the Commonwealth of Man split off on the giant ship, the Chrysanthemum, and UNE can find them, and it turns out they've all turned to autocratic fascists, which the peace-loving UNE doesn't like. It's, it's cool. I like how somebody decided in the in the comment section, it's like, oh, I can just create 64 empires that all have this origin, and it will spawn 64 <laughs> additional empires. That's uh that's an interesting, interesting suggestion. I really hope that uh that is gonna be about uh, gonna be cool. But now we get to the one, the bugbear, the big one. That on paper is awesome, but it causes some problems. And I hope that uh, you've been sticking around for this one because it is actually really important that we talk about this because how this particular origin is set up is not cool. All right. Tree of Life. Only for hive minds. Starts with a powerful tree of life on your homeworld. It's disastrous if you should somehow lose control of it. Now, the tree of life by itself is a really cool mechanic for a hive mind. You pop growth speed plus 15%. Society research speed from jobs plus 10%. Yeah, that's that's all cool. Housing is increased. Max agricultural districts increase. And you get an upkeep. It costs for upkeep and food. But still, you know, you can send ships out there or colony ships. They put their own little saplings down so you can build more trees of life yada yada this is cool on paper however there is a serious problem with this it's locked behind federations why is this a problem i expect all the other ones are some of the other ones are also locked behind federations all right okay so this origin is locked behind federation that's cool that's cool hive minds are locked behind utopia so in order to play with the Tree of Life, you need to own Utopia and Federations. And I, I would like to point out that this is not the first time this has happened. And um, the last time this happened was when Utopia came out and everybody's like, Oh yeah, cool, the uh, Ascension perks, they're awesome, awesome system. This is this is on par with the Ascension system. It, it, it completely is going to change the game in terms of additional content that the team can crank out for it. However, then Synthetic Dawn came out, and then Machine Worlds became a thing, which were then locked once again behind Ascension perks, which meant that if you want to use Machine Worlds, 
you're going to use, um, well, you're going to need to uh, own Utopia and Synthetic Dawn. And this is the same situation. And I'm really, really, really not cool with this. You should not have to own another expansion in order to use the mechanics of another expansion. So you need the base game, you need an expansion, and then another expansion. That's that's not cool, especially with the modular model that uh, the team has been using for the last four years. It's... Again, these numbers aren't final, don't get me wrong, but I wouldn't be surprised if Tree of Life is going to move to Utopia only. Uh, because, yeah, that's... Oof, oof. That's a big oof right there. Yeah, I'm really, really curious about your, about your, uh, you know, your thoughts about this one. Having Tree of Life being locked behind both Federations and Utopia. Yeah, just give your comments below. It's, it's, it's machine worlds all over again. And I think it's really important that we talk about this and bring it out in the open. Because we cannot have this sort of thing. It's, it's, it's bad. It's, it's just bad, 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 bad. What is also bad is the fact that the amount of videos regarding playthroughs as well as, uh, you know, the pollution and all that stuff, uh, the worm in waiting, uh, those videos have been put on hiatus. Why have those been put on hiatus, Acepec? It has to do with performance. It has to do with the performance of the game. I can barely play through either of those right now without me going completely insane about the amount of time it takes to get through a month. Now we're gonna go and um, I'm gonna go and leave that particular subject open for now because I will be doing a video this weekend talking about this particular subject. It's really important that we talk about the performance of the game and how things have been developing ever since Le Guin came out. Uh, Le Guin has been was a great expansion, but it has seriously affected performance. And without our collective reach out, it's it's not going to change. Anyway, we're going to go and uh, wrap this up. We'll talk a little bit more in depth on that particular subject this weekend. I hope that uh, I hope that you're already kind of feeling where that one is going to go. But make sure you check that one out. But in the meantime, we're going to wrap this up here. This has been Origins. Overall, cool new system. A couple of cool bonuses for Federations or if you have other ex uh, expansions. It's going to be part of the free patch. Uh, it makes perfect sense. It's going to go in the same directions as Ascension perks. Makes perfect sense. I have no problem with that. It's just friggin' tree of life that is locked behind two expansions. Until next time, take good care of yourself and, of course, also your tree of life. Because if it gets nuked from orbit, you will lose all your cool bonuses.